Hello, hello, hello. Good day, good day, everyone. Again, we are going to discuss for today uh, video tutorial. This is a video tutorial for shear and moment diagram. So this is one topic that we have for mechanics of deformable bodies and engineering mechanics. Now we, we are now going to discuss one problem regarding beams. So the beam here is loaded with 200 kilonewton at point B, which is at a distance three meters from point A, and then another 150 kilonewton, which is loaded at point C from a distance at point A of five meters. So these loads are concentrated load. So what we are going to do is to determine the shear and the moments by drawing the shear diagram and the moment diagram based on the load diagram. So this is a beam which is simply supported. The span of the beam is seven plus two plus three meters. So that's a total of 12 meters span. And the first thing that we have to do is to determine the reactions. So the reactions at point A and at point B can be determined by taking summation moment at either point A or point D. If you would like to take moment at point A, you will be able to determine the reaction at D. If you would like to take moment at point D, you will be able to determine the reaction at A. So what we are going to do now is to first determine those reactions before we can draw the shear and moment diagram. Another tip in drawing the shear and moment diagram, it should be based on the load, the shear and the moment. So if you would like to determine the shear diagram, take a look at the load diagram. If you would like to take uh, to determine the moment, you just take a look at this shear diagram. The area of the load diagram corresponds to the shear for the equivalent points, and the area of the shear diagram corresponds to the moment in the corresponding points. So let us first start with determining the reactions at the supports. So remember the supports that we have here is a hinge support and a roller support. So what we are going to do is to take summation moment at point A is equals to zero. In this way, we will be able to determine the reaction at D. Once you take moment at A, reaction A will have no moment with reference to point A, but the reaction B will have its moment. And if you are going to take our sign convention here that all forces going clockwise is positive. And take note also that the reactions Okay, the reactions D and A, if you are going to sum it up, will be equal to the load applied, load A and load B. So now let us start with taking moment at point A. From the principle of moment, moment is simply equals to the product of the load multiplied by the perpendicular distance. So if we take moment at point A, we will have reaction at D is going in the counterclockwise direction. So if you are going to take that, reaction at D is going in the clockwise direction. And take note that the distance from point A of reaction at D is seven plus two plus three. So this is times 12. While you would notice that the 200 kilonewton, if you are going to take moment at A, the 200 kilonewton is going clockwise. So you can say that it is equals to 200 multiplied by the distance, perpendicular distance, which is three meters. Okay. And then you have the 150 kilonewton. 
you're going to add that up with because it is going still going in the direction clockwise direction so you have 150 but the distance from point a is five meters so if you would like to determine the reaction at d by mathematical calculations we will be able to determine the reaction at d and take note by calculation that would be 200 times 3 plus 150 times 5 divided by 12 which is equals to 112.5 so this is 112.5 and take note the unit that we have here is kilo newton so we have now we have now the value for reaction at d the value for the reaction at d is 112.5 kilo newton okay that's 100 point 112.5 kilo newton okay so that is kilo newton now you will take summation if we will take summation this time at point d is equals to zero and take note that all forces again clockwise is positive counterclockwise negative so reaction at a will have a moment at d and the perpendicular distance of reaction at a from point d is three plus two plus seven so that is equivalent to 12. While the 200 kilonewton will be going in the opposite direction, that is 7 plus 2. Distance is 7 plus 2 meters. So that is 200 times 9. Plus, you have the 150, which is also going in the same direction as the 200 kilonewton. So that is 150. You multiply it by the distance, 2 plus 7. So that is, sorry, 150 is, the distance is only 7 meters. Okay. So that means the reaction at A, if you would like to determine the reaction at A by calculations, that is 200 times 9 plus 150 times 7 divided by 12 so that is 237.5 kilo newton we have one 237.5 kilo newton so once we have the reactions we can now draw the moment and the shear diagram, the shear and the moment diagram. So let us begin with point A to point B, and let us begin with the shear. For the shear, what we have to do is to simply take summation of forces. Remember that we have reaction at A, which is going upward. So this will be our sign convention. Going upward, that is positive. And going downward, we have negative. So this is our point of reference. If this is point of reference is zero, this is positive and this is negative. We have the same point of reference for moment, this is zero. We have positive and this is negative. So remember reaction at A is going upward. So reaction at A is positive. And then of course you have the 200 kilonewton which is going downward. You have the force A which is going downward. And then of course we have 150 kilonewton, which is again going downward. Okay. 
And then, of course, you have the reaction at D, which is going upward. That should be equals to zero. Okay. So let us begin with reaction at A. We have 237.5 kilonewton. So if we are going to draw that, it's going up. And that is 237.5. And then because we have no load in between point A to point B, we have a zero degree carb there. And then minus, you have the 200 load minus the 200. If you are going to subtract that, that's equivalent to 37.5. Okay, that is 37.5. 37.5. And again, from point B to point C, we have no loads there. So that will be zero. And then from the 37.5, kilonewton, we have 150 kilonewton, which is going down. So you're going to add, sorry, minus 150. So 37.5, 37.5 minus 150 is minus 112.5 kilonewton. So that is going down. That would be minus 112.5. And take note from this point C to point D, we have no loads available. So that means we have a zero degree carb there. So negative 112.5 and take note that at point D, we have a 112.5 kilonewton R sub D, which is going up. So that should be added 112.5, and that is equals to zero. And that is equals to zero. So all of this you would notice is our shear diagram. And take note to check whether you have a correct solution. At point D, our value for the reaction, uh, sorry, our value for the shear is zero. And you would have also this point of zero shear, which is also the location where you have the maximum moment. So this is what you call as the point of zero shear, point of zero shear, and that is also the location where the maximum mo moment will probably occur. Now let us go to the determination of the moment. So for the moment, what we are going to do is to make use of the shear diagram. So the shear diagram from point A to point B is a rectangle. So the area of the, the uh, value of the shear from point A to point B corresponds to the moment. So if you are going to determine the moment at B, that is simply equals to area, which is the height is 237.5, remember, and then of course you have this distance, which is three meters. So that is 237.5. You multiply it by three meters. Okay. So you have 237.5. You multiply it by three meters. So that is 712.5. By the way, the unit for moment is kilonewton meter. So at this point, at this point where you have the value 
of the moment. Remember, this is a zero degree carb. So that means our moment should be an increasing carb. And this should be a first degree carb. And this value is what you have, the 712.5. Okay. So this is 712.5. The value of this moment is 712.5 kilonewton meter. Okay. Take note of the unit. Then if you would like to determine the moment at C, the moment at C is simply equals to, remember you have the area, okay? In between this, area is 37.5 multiplied by the distance of two meters. Now, what we want now is to determine the moment here at point C. So to determine the moment at point C, remember that we have a 712.5 moment here from point B. We are going to add the area of this shear diagram. This is 37.5 multiplied by the distance, which is two meters. So 37.5 times the distance, which is two meters. So the 712.5 plus 37.5 times 2, okay, that is 787.5. Again, the unit is kilonewton meter. So that means as I have mentioned, the location of the point of zero shear is the maximum moment. So you would notice that this is the location of the maximum moment. And that is equivalent to 787.5 based on our calculation. And then we are going to determine the moment at D. So to determine the moment at D, that is simply equals to 787.5. Remember that we've got a negative value here. It's negative 112.5. So you're going to add but since we have a negative value there, we can just say 787.5 and you multiply it by, sorry, minus 112.5. You multiply this by the distance, which is seven meters. So 787.5 minus 112.5 times seven is equals to zero. And if you are going to draw the moment diagram, that means at point D, the value of the moment is equals to zero. And take note you have here, the moment at point D, which is equals to zero. So that's how you determine the shear and moments for the beam using the shear and moment diagrams. That's all for today. I will see you in another blog. Again, this is Dr. Ramela B. Ramirez at your service. God bless you all.